Hey, what's up everybody? It's Alex again, and today I wanted to do a follow-up video to the last one that I did on snare drum compression, but this one focused more on the kick drum. So the same principles apply. Uh, the compressor basically just evens out the dynamics between each individual hit, and you can, depending on how you're setting the compressor settings, specifically the attack and the release, uh, you can kind of change the attack characteristics of the kick to give it a little bit more kind of punch and click to it. So basically what I've done is I've just uh, used the same drum loop that I used in the other video where I've just done like a little phrase here and kept pretty consistent on most of the kick hits from what I can tell. Um, I do have two microphones. I've got a Shure Beta 91 for my kick in and I think with this I was using the Sennheiser 421 as a kick out. So I blended both of these. Uh, it looks like primarily it's the kick in, it's the Beta 91 and then a little bit of the 421. So I've just done like a quick comp, blended those both, bounced it to Ableton. And on both of these, I don't really have a whole lot of EQ, just dipping out a bit of around 300, I believe. 395, and then, yeah, so. So not a whole lot of EQing on here, so it's a relatively dry signal. With this, I don't have anything on the drums bus or the uh, master bus either. So I'm just going to kind of go through these one by one, and I've got the stock Ableton compressor, the Wave C1, Focusrite Red 3, the Universal Audio DBX160, and the 1176, and then the Waves SSL channel. So on all these, I keep the ratio about 4 to 1, uh, attack right around 25 to 30 milliseconds typically, and I'm going for an average of about maybe 5 decibels of gain reduction. So here's what it, it sounds like in the context of the mix. I'm just going to go through these one by one. So you can hear with all those, it does even out the dynamics a bit. Uh, each one has a little different flavor to it. It's not hugely noticeable, especially in the context of the mix. So what I'm going to do is just go through these again, but with the kick soloed. So we're just listening to the uh, kick on here. I'll go through these one by one again. So there you have it with those ones, um, and just going to go through one more time and add a little bit more gain to this, so it's hitting the compressors a little bit harder and doing a bit more gain reduction, so you can really kind of hear what's going on with this. And just going to go through them one by one, one last time here, do it a little more quickly.
So that's what all of those ones sound like. These are just some of the more common ones that I typically see used. Uh, I usually prefer the SSL channel strip, uh, either the Waves or the Universal Audio one. And like I did with the snare drum, I'll typically do a little bit of compression prior to hitting that, usually around you know just a couple decibels of gain reduction. So it's hitting the compressor, the secondary compressor, a little more consistently and evenly. And then I'll add some EQ to kind of taste there as well. But the SSL compressors sound pretty good to my ear, at least for most of the mixes I do. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments and what other compressors you like to use on the kick drum or what other uh, methods you, know, you use to kind of even out the dynamics and add some character to that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe for more videos and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks.